Uh, so, uh, hello everybody once more, and we continue uh, our panel um, devoted to the uh, the history of Ukrainian literary criticism of the 1920s, 1930s between formalism and Marxism. And I would like to uh, <clears throat> to ask uh, the next presenter, uh, Natalia Busatyuk, uh, to talk on uh, on her topic. Natalia, you're welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me know if you can see my presentation. Can you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, the theme of my topic today, or my talk today, is literary criticism of Kiev neoclassicist between formalism and, social, formalism and socialism. And the previous speaker, Oksana Pashko, has already told us about Kharkiv Center of um, Literary Studies in Ukraine. And now I uh, let's move westwards to the Kiev, to Kiev Center of scientific, of scientific Studies in Literature and Literary Criticism. Uh, Kiev neoclassicists were one of the significant literary groups of the Ukrainian executed or Red Renaissance. The formation of the group started in 1918 and the peak of the activities was uh, in the 1920s. Most of the group members were persecuted by the Soviet authorities in the 19. It's a matter of argument who belongs to the group of Kiev neoclassicists, because uh, the group was not institutionalized. It was rather a circle of uh, friends, like-minded colleagues. I defined 12 members of this circle. Uh, you can see them on the slide, the core, so-called five cluster of Kiev neoclassicists, Mikola Zero in the center, you see them. Him and the leader, Maxim Rilsky, the most prominent poet among them, Pavlo Filipovich, Mikhail Dreykhmara, and Oswald Burkhardt. Plus the six in the cluster, we have told about him, uh, we, told, uh, we talked about him yesterday, Viktor Petrov Domontovich. Uh, the immediate circle consists of 12 participants and their uh, 13 co thinker uh, Andriy Nikovsky. Uh, Kiev neoclassicists are treated as polyhistors, very educated men of that time who had a wide range of activities and interests. Most of them were historians of literature, university professors, linguists, editors, and translators. As scholars, they studied ancient Indian literature, Russian Golden Age, Ukrainian Romanticism, German Expressionism, and different, many different national variants of modernism in Eastern and Central Europe. In the 1920s, uh, Mikola Zero proclaims motto at fontes, which means uh, back to the sources of the Ukrainian literature and European literature without Russian intermediary. It is of particular interest for our discussion today to know that Kiev neoclassicists were very prolific critics. The leader of the group, Mikola Zaro, had a reputation of a magistral judge in the Ukrainian criticism, requiring high quality of literary text and attention to technique, literary technique. Uh, the topic of my speech today is literary criticism of Kiev neoclassicists between formalism and sociologism. But to tell the truth, it's a bit wrong statement uh, because uh, it gives a, simpli <laughs> a simplified perspective of the, on the methodological variety of Kiev neoclassicism. In fact, our heroes deals, dealt with biographical and psychological studies, Freudism, textology, and documentation studies, science, issues of reception, Communitics and even anti-colonial studies. Uh, 
Ukrainian criticism in the 1920s didn't live on formalism and socialism alone, but there is no denying that exactly these two approaches were the major trends of that time. Formalism and sociologism stand out against the methodological pluralism of Kiev neoclassicists' criticism, and their formal interests had multiple, uh, multiple uh, sources. Among the forerunners of Ukrainian formalism, the name of Vladimir Peretz, the supervisor of the seminar on Russian philology at the St. Vladimir University in Kiev, is named first and foremost. Kiev neoclassicists studied at the Kiev University, but only four of them, you can see them on the slide, Drehmara, Flipovich, Savchenko, and uh, Klinovich took part in this per, in Peretz seminar. And Ukrainian, but Ukrainian historians of literature reckon in Peretz school, so-called school, uh, from force of inertia or for company, most of Kiev neoclassicists, including Mikola Zarov, the leader, who in fact was not a member of seminar, but attended Peretz lectures on church Slavonic and Russian literature in the university. It's a point of issue who were the true Vladimir Peretz followers and adherers among his students. The relationship within the seminar, the inheritance of Peretz, the parent, Peretz scientific principles is a separate topic. I will not dwell on this issue. Let's just say Peretz made a great impact on the development of, of Ukrainian philology, changing the perspective of research. His invention, philological method, and his slogan, not, not what, but how, which meant let's investigate the construction of literary text, seemed to be in sync with incipient Ukrainian modernism, although Peretz neglected modernist lit literature. And uh, that aside, Peretz's uh, disregard to modern literature and his inability to understand current trends was remarked by his former student, Pavlo Filipovich, in the article, The Professor and Proletarian Poets, published an unknown article, was published uh, in the newspaper Proletarska Pravda in um, 19. 23, the name of Professor Peretz was not named there, but it was mentioned. And the next. Uh, now let's uh, briefly outline inter interrelations of Kiev neoclassicists with Russian formalism and its adherer uh, Prague linguistic circle. Kiev critics had personal contacts with members of Opoyas. For example, Liz, for example, Boris Larin had been on friendly terms with Pavlo, Filipovich, Mikhail Dreyfmar, and Mikhail, um, and Mikhail Kalinovich since studied at Pavlo Halhan Collegium and um, Kiev University. Dmitro Chizhevsky got also, we, we talked about him to, yesterday. Dmitry Chizhevsky got also got acquainted with future neoclassicists during studies at Kiev University. He and Oswald Burhardt were close friends since the 1930s. Chizhevsky helped Burhardt to take position of a lecturer of Russian and Ukrainian um, at the University of Münster in 1934. In 1929, Pavlo Filipovich sent Roman Jakobson, our, we, have, we also talked about him, <laughs> uh, our old he heroes, a former formalist, uh, Jakobson, and a leading member of Prague linguistic circle at the time, and a former formalist. Uh, he had never, uh, whom, whom Filipovich had never met before, uh, had, uh, had Jakobs, uh, sent Jakobson a present with the dedication his newly published volume of essays from the new Ukrainian literature. It was regarded as a symbolic gesture indicating Filipovich's connections with the Prague International Group of um, Structuralists. Uh, Yakubsky, uh, Boris Yakubsky, one of Kiemnikos, was in communication with Boris Eichenbaum and made a failed attempt to 
to arrange Eichenbaum's lecture in Kiev. Maurice Sikupski asked Eichenbaum for promotion of, of his students from Kiev University, Solomon Racer and Vera Kalman, who had moved to Leningrad. And Solomon Racer became later a member of famous Eichenbaum's seminar on literary wit. And Mikhail Mohilansky was in correspondence with Boris Tomashevsky. It seems like they um, had not only um, professional, but also friendly relations. In letters, they discussed publishing activities as well as the earthquake of November 1940 and code of behavior by earthquakes. I'm not going to elaborate on a huge response on to Russian formalists from Kiev, Kiev neoclassicist. It's very well described in the newly published book, Atlantis of Soviet Mod uh, National Modernism, Formal Method in Ukraine by my colleagues, Galina Babak and Alexander Dmitriev. I'll just say that Kiev neoclassicists reviewed several books of Russian formalists, and there were a lot of quotations and references to Russian formalists in the articles and in correspondence. Here, Kyiv scholars disagreed with Russian formalists on many issues. Oh, sorry, I just... Uh, on many issues. Uh, for example, a direct addict of, uh, on Russian formalism was made by uh, Viktor Petrov. In his introduction to Memoirs from Early Days, it was introduction to the sixth volume of uh, works by Pantelimon Kulish. Petrov wrote, class analysis of Kulish's literary orientation could explain much more the narrow and thematic formalists of Brice Henbaum. Boris Eichenbaum narrows his tasks as a historian of literature in the name of literary immanentism. Petrov criticized Eichenbaum from the point of view of Marxists. Uh, pay attention, it's 1931, it was uh, wrote in 1931. And we uh, will talk about Marxism a bit later. Despite neoclassicists criticized Russian formalists on many issues, they made use of their concepts in Ukrainian literature studies. For instance, dominant, uh, um, in particular sound dominant, rhythm as a constructive factor, although Yakubsky argued about ranking rhythm and meter. Uh, then literary uh, theory of parody, devices, for example, device of scars, device of astranenia. Moreover, Kiev neoclassicist had a lot in common with the late Russian formalism uh, uh, for on um, issue of literary bit and literary evolution. There are also similar similarities, similarities between novelized biographies by Yuri Tenanov and Viktor Petrov, and studies on Russian, Rom, on Russian, on Ukrainian Romanticism are often grounded on Viktor Zhermunsky uh, works on Romanticism. It should be said, Kiev classicist uh, got uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it should be said, uh, Kiev neoclassicism. Oh, sorry, I have, I don't, uh, can't find this slide. Uh, should be said, Kiev neoclassicists got a disproportionately little feedback for their literary criticism from Russian formalists. They remained almost invisible to them. There were several. Ex um, Exclusions. It's remarkable that Russian formalists uh, made references to student publications of Kiev neoclassicists. For example, Viktor Zhermunsky refers to new horizons in the research field of poetical style, Principles of Elster by Oswald Burhardt. 
Vladimir Prop in his famous morphology of the tale referred to Stefan Savchenko's 500 pages a master thesis honored with the golden medal it was entitled Russian Folk Tale, the History of a Collection and Research. Boris Tomashevsky positively reviewed science of versification by Boris Yakubsky, the hero of Opoyas, and, and the adhero of Opoyas, Yulian Oxman, reviewed monograph uh, Shevchenko and paper Shevchenko on December by Pavlo Filipovich. When Mikola Zeru was asked, was asked uh, by his Kharkiv colleague, we have talked uh, today about Hakiv Center, and Irmia Eisenstock was one of you know, a prominent uh, philologist of the Hakiv Center. Uh, when uh, there was asked about formalism of Kiev neoclassicists, he denied it and explained that his main task in the history of literature was to observe uh, the unity of an epoch in literature, science, world outlook, and behavior according to Oscar Walzer. Zero added that he preferred German theory. Uh, we understand that German language theory, for Kiev, they use this term, um, umbrella term, let's say, for German, uh, for Austrian and Swiss and German uh, theories. Zero added that he preferred German theory to Russian formalists, but he preferred Russian formalists to Ukrainian Marxists. Another neoclassicist, Boris Yakubsky, was fond of German history of art without names, history of John genres. Yakubsky talked about complete dependence of Russian formalists on European science. Sivar Saran uh, Walzel, second, and he talked about secondariness of Russian theories. He said, formalist approach is not of Russian origin, but of German one. Neoclassicists were better aware of Russian theory of literature than about German and Austrian. They argued with Russian formalists, but they never called in question concepts of German language theories, maybe because they were not so aware of them. Uh, from that point of view, the motto ad fontes proclaimed by Mikola Zero in the 1920s could also be interpreted as back to the sources of uh, the literary theory, not only sources of li the literature. Philologists of Kiev Sokol made references to the following publications by German and Austrian theories of literature and culture. You can see them on your screen. German Romanticism, the artistic form of the poetry of work, Impressionism and Expressionism in Contemporary Germany by, by Oskar Walzer, Impressionism in Life and Art by Richard Hamann, Richard Hamann, the works of Wolfling, Wollinger, and so on. The former neoclassic, neoclassic uh, native German, by the way, Oswald Burkhardt, after migrating to Germany, defended his doctoral dissertation uh, titled Late Motifs by Leonid Andreev in the University of Münster in 1940. It was published a year later. His doctoral thesis was based on the theory of late motifs elaborated by Leo Spitzer. If you compare on the screen, you can see uh, the years of publications by German language theorists with the years of references made by Kiev neoclassicists, you will notice a delayed reaction of the Ukrainian philologists. The response to Russian theories was much more synchronous. synchronous. Uh, we have already observed interrelations of Kiev neoclassicists with foreign theories. And this poses the question, did Kiev neoclassicists neoclassic see the Ukrainian version of formalism? Did they reflect on it? Yes, they did. In a panel, panel section, session of uh, Historical Literary Society of the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences in, my, in March 1924, Viktor Petrov, our hero, reported on formalist 
trends in the Ukrainian art and literary studies. If some literary criticism or other is not dedicated to formalist observations, we neglect it, said Petrov. But four years later, another uh, neoclassicist, Pavlo Filipovich, you uh, may see him on the slide, denied pure formalism in Ukraine. He supposed Ukrainian critics to have never separated research of literature from that of the social process. Although Pavlo Filipovich asserted, asserted that there were no, no Shklovsky followers in Ukraine, but he observed a precise interest to the theory of poetics, uh, of poetry, to criticize uh, formalist extremes doesn't mean to abjure formalist practices, said Filipovich. He named, Filipovich named quite um, a long list of Ukrainian philologists who dealt with poetics. It must be emphasized that Pavlo Filipovich, as well as his um, colleagues from neoclassicist circle, often didn't distinguish between formalism and poetics studies in the whole. They reviewed Ukrainian books on literary theater, theory. For example, there are reviews, you reviewed poetics by Dmitry Zahul, Boris Yakubsky, the first part of the nature of the short story by Hrychori Maifet, Viktor Petrov, the language and poetry by Boris Navrotsky. Uh, Kiev neoclassicist admitted the existence of Ukrainian formalism, but did the opponents, proletarian critics, admit it? Definitely they did. Implacable enemy of formalism, Marxism Samilo Stupak proclaimed, formalism has always been scary and pursued an ostrich policy in Ukraine, preferring to come into sight, mainly not alone, but in the company of like-minded methodological schools. Samila Shupak blamed Ukrainian formalists for burying their heads in the sand. And he was right. Really, a lot of critics concerned themselves with the theory of poetry and analyzed the form of certain texts without manifesting their methodological approaches. And Kiev neoclassists were among them. The ostrich, ostrich policy of Ukrainian formalism caused its later definitions as intuitive formalism by Yaroslav Polishchuk, or a phenomenon of formalist without formalism by Svetlana Matvienko. And it is worth using the definition hidden formalism, also this definition for methodology for methodology of Kiev neoclassicists, because there could be seldom seen an explicit literary theory and often a hidden formalist analysis in their literary critic and, uh, and research on uh, history of literature. Uh, in neoclassical circle, only Boris Yakubsky was a theorist of formalism as well as of sociologism. Yakubsky had often changed his ideology, ideologies and views. He started as formalist in science of versification and in a year later published a research paper on sociological method in literature. Graphic artist, caricaturist, uh, George Georgi uh, Dubinsky represented Boris Yakubsky as the kind god of the, fa the father. The anti-religious picture is signed below with a phrase stylized in church Slavonic, I am good, love your brother writer too, which is modified Bible, Bible quotation, I am a good shepherd. Uh, Boris Yakubsky's tolerance to both contending methodological approaches, formalism and sociologism, his tolerance to several contending, uh, contending literary groups, let's say proletarian heart, uh, conservative neoclassicists and insolent futurists, caused such an image. Yakubsky inconsistent, Yakubsky's Inconsistency of use was parodied and became proverbial. Nevertheless, 
uh, the frame, he framed major notions of formalist approach to literature, form, technique, texture, texture, artistic design of work, and partly style were synonyms for him. According to Jakubski, poetical form consists of elements, rhythm, meter, uh, euphonia, uh, and strophics. Content is a stuff taken by writers from life, produced by social environment, uh, psychology of epoch and class, economic relations. It's interesting that Boris Jakubski emphasized uh, the unity of form and content, but he acknowledged a methodological problem. Literary science didn't have tools to analyze form and content as a unity yet. That was true. Kiev neoclassicists mainly considered form and content separately in their practical literary studies. Jakubski talked about formal, formalist, morphological and stylistic approaches, approaches as equivalent. It's remarkable that attitude toward formalism, uh, availability to accept it, accept it and tolerate it were indicators of intellectual liberty in the Ukrainian humanities. In the 1920s, Ukrainian theorists and critics were allowed to produce a lot of formal concepts. Viktor Ehrlich, a famous researcher of Russian formalism, formalism, noted about Russian literary theory of the 1920s, but it is also applicable for Ukrainian context. He said that before Marxist method became dogma, it had, it had allowed a variety of collaborations with non-Marxist methods, with other methods. By the end of the 1920s, formalist studies and cooperation of formalists with other methods were under attack of the official Marxist critics. And you know, uh, neoclassicists, Kim neoclassicists were accused of formalism, and it was a stark accusation in the 1930s. Formalism was considered uh, was considered equi equivalent to counter-revolution. Being under interrogation, Pavlov Filipovich in 1935 admitted guilt in, uh, in um, admitted his guilt. He said he was formalist and documentalist in research of history of literature being in the camp of counter-revolutionary bourgeois, nationalists, uh, Rushevsky and Zero. It's worth noting that neoclassicism were blamed for formalism in two aspects. First, formalism in methodology, and second, formalism in poetry. In poetry. As poets, they created so-called form-oriented literature. They cultivated refined, rare, exotic, exotic for Ukrainian literature, forms and strophes, for example, sonnets or octaves. And they invoked aspiring writers to work hard on the technique. That's why they were twice formalists according to their Marxist opponents. Uh, what's the compromise between formalism and sociologism, sociologism possible? Mikhail Mokhilansky and Boris Yakubsky were seeking for answer to this question in the, field, in the realm of literary theory. To tell the truth, Mikhail Mokhilansky was an active defender of formalism. And he was also called an advocate of neoclassics. Uh, it's interesting that he really was a lawyer um, and he had practiced law in the courts of Kiev and St. Petersburg before revolution. His job skills had been useful to him during the Ukrainian form and content discussion, so-called war camp between uh, Zmistoviki, contentialists and formalists, uh, which took place in 1923, 1930s. In the article on the issue, issue of comprehension of a literary work, 
Mikhail Mohilansky attempt to accommodate, to combine formalist and sociological method using a very popular Plekhanov, Georgi Plekhanov's scheme of two-step literary analysis. Mohilansky used this scheme but inverted it. According to Mohilansky, first a literary critic should solve an analytical problem, namely consider a style of a text, many facts of poetics, and then a literary critic should solve a synthetical problem to find out social determination of style. Mohilansky convinced that formal analysis could help Marxist uh, critics to see the specificity of literature. And you may ask me, how did Marxists take his proposal? Uh, they quote his theory, naive eclectic, formalistic in intervention, and metaphysical contraband. The second attempt to combine formalism and sociologism was made by Boris Yakubsky. Do you remember him in the image of God the Father? Uh, Boris Yakubsky invented more complicated and more tricky scheme. Uh, he managed to combine several old approaches under the guidance of a new sociological method. Yakubsky made a terminolog terminological trick. He distinguished between method and approaches. Sociological method became an umbrella notion that covered old, well-known approaches described by Volodymyr Vladimir Peretz, I have already mentioned him earlier. Uh, these were um, formal, philological, psychobiographical, cultural, historical, and comparative. Uh, some methods uh, from Paris, uh, he didn't include some methods from Paris classification, such as publicistic, historical, political, and so on. And it should be said that Yakubsky used sociological method and Marxist method, Marxist method as synonyms. You may ask me, uh, how did Ukrainian Marxists take it? Marxist critics called Yakubsky eclectic and for sorts. Uh, for his theory and theories of that kind, they coined a new term for sotsivstvo, which means combination of formalism and sociologism with a derog in a derogative sense of word, the derogative connotation. Uh, by the beginning of the 1930s, uh, th uh, most of neoclassicists came to sociologism. We can see a variety of types of literary sociology in their criticism. For instance, a widespread sociology of author, some unsuccessful attempts of sociology of style by Boris Yakubsky, historical sociology, sociology of readers by uh, Pavlo Filipovich, sociology of literature of literary history by Zerub, and even vulgar sociologism uh, with aggressive Marxist line of argument by Filipovich, for example. Some texts were quasi sociological. In fact, made by the means of other methods, for example, comparative uh, cultural, historical, or formalist, and fit it with sociological introduction, insights, or conclusions. Neoclassicists uh, utilized means of Marxist discourse less than their proletarian opponents. But still, there are uh, shining examples of so-called lingua sovietica in their texts uh, with characteristic set of phrases, ideological cliches, quotations of classics of Marxism, Leninism. Um, Mikhail Mogilansky was especially skilled in the art of discussions using Marxist lexicon. A neoclassicist said jokingly in Poetical Manifesto that Lunacharsky was his Sancho Panza and Marx was his friend and brother. Um, the evolution of uh, uh, views of neoclassicism from from formalism to sociology 
can be clearly illustrated by transformation of Mercola's zero concept of literary history. And it should be clarified that in this case, by literary history, I mean a panoramic special genre, a kind of narrative about transformation of literary system through time. Mercola zero is well known for two histories of lit literature published in 1924 and uh, 1928, a, a yellow block on the screen. Uh, his unpublished histories of literature of the early and late periods, manuscripts and typescripts kept in public and private archives are still unknown or little known to researchers. They are highlighted in green and red on the slide. Mercola Zarov's histories of literature, written, written during 1917, 1918, are of the contextual type with nation, nation building narration. Their periodization is based on the stages of Ukrainian statehood formation. In this text, Zarov used as a reference very popular, populist uh, history of the Ukrainian literature by Serhii Yefremov. And the histories of the second decade, um, they are yellow uh, on the um, slide, uh, are based on a rotation of literary styles. Although they are kept in mind cultural and social context, social setup of writers, he still eluded social periodization. His history is coming close to the history without names. The main characters of this narrative, narrative are style and genre. The plot is the adventures during the 19th century, um, but they couldn't avoid biographical insights. Uh, still, they are not crucial points of, this, of these histories. At the beginning of the 1930s, Zero formulated a new, a radical and new different concept of literary history. It was a late neoclassical project by the leader of Kiev, Kiev neoclassicists. The periodization in this history was based on the changing of Marxist socio-economic formations. Although genres and styles were, were cursorily uh, uh, reviewed. And now uh, let's uh, compare very briefly uh, how the same period, for instance, uh, for instance, the first half of the 19th century uh, is was termed in different Zerov's histories from each of the of three periods. In the first case, the period, it's a compendium on lectures of the history of Ukrainian uh, literature, uh, uh, read in Krolovets in 1918. Uh, this manuscript uh, uh, is, uh, is kept in a Hrihori Culture Museum, museum. and uh, in the first case, hmm, the period of 19th and 20th century is called Literature of National Revival. In the second uh, case, I take the famous, the most famous uh, history uh, by Zero. It is called the Epoch of Classical Remains and Sentimentalism, the Epoch of Romanticist, Romanticist Views and Forms. And in the third case, the same epoch is called Crisis of Noble Sovdom Society and Epoch of the Early Industrial Capitalism. The changes of other concepts of literature are evident. And um, each of, uh, I'm going to my conclusions, each of neoclassicism uh, has his uh, personal attitude toward formalism or sociologism. Everybody wo um, was more or less engaged in the practices of these uh, approaches, but approaches, but one can also see some common trends in their criticism. By the beginning of the 19th, uh, thought is, most of them had come to sociologism. The theme of our conference 
issues of simultaneous, simultaneity and non-simultaneity in European history of science can be considered using the example of literary criticism by neoclassicists as well. As scholars and critics, they stood on the frontier of the Eastern and Western literary theories. Simultaneity can be understood as a, in the perspective of synchronous reception of ideas from Russian formalists and uh, partly um, Czech structuralism and non-simultaneity as a bit delayed but strong response to German language theory. Observing Ukrainian formalism, it's important no, not only to describe interrelations and uh, sim uh, typological similarities with other national versions of formalism or structuralism, but also to find out the specificity of the Ukrainian solution of these theoretical problems. And we can also talk about a delayed reconstruction, let's say not simultaneity of Ukrainian formalist discourse because well-founded overviews, uh, synthesizing papers on Ukrainian formalism are coming almost in a hundred years later after the, after the uprising of the phenomenon. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Natalia, for your wonderful, uh, wonderful and very interesting presentation. I think you uh, provide us with the uh, uh, big uh, uh, field for the further discussion and rethinking on the um, uh, well-known concepts. And now I would like to um, uh, to uh, not introduce, as I did it, but to ask Alexander Dmitriev uh, to present uh, his uh, um, his talk today. Uh -huh. Alexander, thank you. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. Can I? Boyd. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. it's okay. It's, I have to press F5 here. Yeah? Or F6. I no. think yes, but uh, I was not successful in it. I don't know, it didn't work in my case. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you, Galina. Thank you, Andri, for inviting me for this very interesting uh, discussion. And uh, I try to uh, continue uh, uh, speak about uh, literary criticism in Soviet Ukraine uh, and also the heritage of uh, uh, Alexander Bilecki uh, as uh, uh, a disciple of um, Kharkiv uh, uh, Potebnya tradition and uh, uh, researcher who uh, uh, wrote it, his works on crossroad of psychological aesthetics, uh, also by Potebnya, and uh, uh, traditional philology in uh, new uh, Soviet context uh, and uh, reality. Uh, reality, uh, uh, even in psychological aesthetics, uh, was very essential uh, concept for. Uh, Belecki, uh, both uh, in his pre-revolution and uh, uh, also Soviet uh, periods uh, uh, of uh, his uh, activities. And uh, uh, in the center of uh, uh, my contribution today uh, would be his uh, famous article uh, about uh, uh, Synthesis in literary studies. Uh, it was uh, published uh, in Russian uh, in the year when uh, Professor Belecki uh, was elected uh, as a member of uh, uh, All Ukrainian uh, Academy of Science. Uh, 
so after the period of uh, purges and uh, terror, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, some try to um, put uh, uh, some stability uh, in search for a new path uh, uh, for literary and uh, even um, cultural uh, studies uh, uh, in Soviet uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, but uh, also abroad in all Soviet Union. Uh, this uh, paper uh, would be republished uh, uh, several times. Uh, uh, after the death of Belecki also, and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, some type of uh, his uh, late credo. Um, and uh, uh, also in post-Soviet uh, Ukraine and sometimes in Russia, uh, this article of uh, Belecki uh, presented as uh, uh, some sort of way uh, between uh, uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, now debated uh, uh, dualism between uh, formalists and uh, social uh, sociologist uh, approach as some kind of uh, synthesis of uh, this uh, uh, left and right uh, way, uh, if it's possible to say so. Uh, uh, so Belecki, um, history, uh, history, treatment of uh, uh, reality within literary studies uh, was really long uh, uh, because uh, he also uh, put uh, this question uh, even uh, during the Civil War uh, in Kharkiv, but in the uh, newspaper New Russian, uh, Vladimir Zinkovetsky, um, uh, recent uh, Ukrainian uh, researcher, uh, scholar of Hogol and Hogolan. Uh, tradition uh, of the 19th century, uh, republished uh, these works uh, of uh, Jan Belecki, Belecki and his disciple uh, never put uh, this publication because of the place and the uh, white uh, anti-Soviet uh, um, periodicals. Uh, uh, but um, just here, Belecki put uh, uh, his ideas of uh, uh, poetical um, understanding uh, of uh, reality and uh, uh, even uh, uh, scholar uh, cognition of uh, uh, reality also within the frameworks of uh, uh, psychological uh, poetics. And uh, this approach is uh, very, very different for his uh, uh, late uh, understanding of uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, art uh, philosophy and uh, uh, what is the idea of political reality and uh, uh, his uh, uh, treatment of reality within the realm of uh, uh, aesthetics or political imagination uh, have uh, some close features with uh, Lviv poet uh, Bogdan Igor Antonich, uh, uh, later uh, ideas uh, close to Hus phenomenology and um, another variant of uh, 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 non-Marxist uh, uh, aesthetics uh, uh, based on uh, uh, principle very different from the uh, idea of uh, uh, cognition and imagination as poor mirror of uh, reality. Um, all all uh, Belecki uh, uh, way of uh, um, literary studies and his thinking about uh, literary synthesis uh, also uh, have um, a very essential uh, theoretical uh, framework uh, close to uh, another uh, follow traveler uh, and sometimes uh, uh, rivals of structuralist aesthetic, uh, uh, definitely uh, René Wellek uh, from 
uh, Prague uh, um, linguistic circle and uh, Welleck in his late years was the author of a multi-volume history of literary criticism, uh, maybe the um, uh, most uh, uh, overbroad um, historical project of literary uh, criticism and uh, his history, and um, as well as uh, uh, Belecki from his uh, very early publication about uh, Faust and uh, uh, Faust and Mus, uh, uh, put intention uh, also in the 20 years um, to the um, European uh, uh, examples of uh, literary mastery and especially to uh, Faustian uh, to Faust as a special kind of uh, European cultural hero. I put attention to this um, feature because uh, um, his uh, Belecki um, a disciple from Kharkiv University, Yuri Shivilov, uh, in his memoirs uh, uh, also mentioned uh, uh, Mephistophel and Faustian um, uh, image uh, as some key to uh, Belecki enigma and to Belecki uh, survival uh, in uh, very bad uh, and uh, um, cruel uh, Soviet uh, reality during the uh, 30 years. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, Belecki triangle between uh, uh, Russia, all Russian, Kharkiv, uh, uh, Imperial University vision uh, in one angle, uh, Ukrainian uh, um, literary renaissance uh, in another, uh, angle and uh, this uh, European uh, uh, comparative uh, philological uh, cultural worldview. Uh, I suppose this uh, triangle is uh, very um, special for understanding of uh, uh, Belecki specificity, um, both in uh, uh, neoclassic and uh, 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 Marxist uh, and formalist uh, debate uh, uh, during the 20 years. Uh, and uh, for his uh, uh, the question of synthesis uh, was not the um, issue uh, only of uh, third way between internal formalist or external sociologist uh, um, uh, treatment uh, or understanding of literature, but also synthesis uh, uh, of new and old, new and old uh, uh, world outlooks uh, um, during the Cultural Revolution um, because of uh, uh, Belecki himself uh, um, tried to uh, avoid uh, some uh, nostalgic uh, notes uh, uh, in his uh, even personal, uh, even uh, um, uh, very limited uh, um, uh, deliverance of uh, uh, thinking about uh, social um, upheaval and the revolution of uh, 1917. Uh, he tried to avoid uh, um, reference to uh, normal, in quarters, uh, uh, reality of uh, Imperial University, uh, despite of his uh, um, formal, uh, old style, um, personal image uh, uh, as uh, old good professor and so on. And uh, uh, another then, uh, uh, Faust, uh, Simeon Polotsky also was uh, uh, constant heroes of uh, uh, Belecki works. Uh, uh, just from uh, 1914, and it's interesting then uh, during the uh, cultural uh, renaissance, during the late uh, uh, the 20s, uh, uh, Belecki put uh, a uh, small but profound article about Simeon Polotsky, a uh, writer between new and old culture uh, of uh, uh, Peter the Great uh, uh, or uh, first Romanus um, time uh, in 
um, collection dedicated to uh, opposite uh, poles of academic world uh, of Belecki times. Uh, one was uh, uh, academic Alexander Sobolevsky from uh, Black Hundred and very conservative old Russian uh, uh, style of thinking. And another was uh, Dmitry Bagali, uh, his uh, mentor and uh, collaborator uh, in um, Ukrainian Academy of Science in Kharkiv. So Simon Polosky was um, also a uh, key uh, figure for uh, Belecki understanding of synthesis uh, old and new. And even in um, uh, 1941, he also published uh, special works about uh, Russian Cultural Revolution, uh, not uh, in Soviet term, uh, but uh, in term of uh, um, cultural upheaval uh, of the early um, 18th century. And um, Belecki understand uh, his idea of uh, synthesis uh, as an um, opposition of uh, three uh, main uh, uh, ways uh, of uh, um, uh, literary studies um, um, of the uh, 1920s. Uh, so against uh, reductionism uh, by Valerian Periverziv or, for example, Dmitry Blagoy, uh, um, uh, the one of main uh, Russian uh, Pushkin's uh, scholar. It's interesting that uh, books uh, of uh, uh, in the right, uh, uh, Mark Sanders and History of Literature was inscripted by Belecki to Dmitry Blagoy. Uh, Blagoy was uh, uh, the author of uh, uh, small but uh, um, uh, have some interest book, uh, uh, Sociology of uh, uh, Pushkin cre Creation. Um, another position was uh, uh, um, uh, philologist from older generation. Uh, Pavel Sakulin, uh, who try also to combine, uh, but uh, only mechanically combined in his stylistic studies, uh, uh, formalists and uh, uh, sociological uh, sociologic, um, approach. And the third, and maybe uh, most interest now, um, is opposition of um, uh, Bilecki to historiosophy. To historiosophy, uh, uh, some philosophy of uh, history um, uh, that was uh, popular, uh, uh, that was uh, so popular uh, during the 30s, during uh, his own search for synthesis uh, in Russian and Ukrainian literary milieu because of the position uh, of the journal uh, literary critics from Moscow, uh, where Lipschitz and Georg Lukacs were the most uh, theoreticals. Uh, but uh, this opposition of uh, historiography uh, more close to um, a strict philological uh, analysis is also uh, in uh, some uh, opposition also to uh, approach of Dmitry Chizhevsky and uh, Viktor Petrov uh, uh, ideas of cultural epochs uh, that was uh, debated uh, uh, yesterday uh, after the um, contribution of uh, uh, Andrei Partnov. And um, uh, uh, during the uh, Marx uh, uh, jubileum of 1933, um, Belecki published uh, his uh, works on Russian and on Ukrainian about Marx Engels and the history of literature. And uh, it is um, erudit and scholar treatment of uh, how both uh, uh, classics uh, um, and teachers of proletariats uh, uh, treat uh, uh, idea of uh, literature, uh, literature development, uh, and uh, especially borrowing from Shakespeare uh, uh, or from Goethe in um, his own uh, theoretical um, uh, uh, works. Uh, and um, uh, in the article of uh, uh, literary synthesis, um, his main thesis um, was some uh, continuation of uh, 
Potemkin approach. Uh, he uh, uh, tried to think about uh, um, literature as uh, the way of cognition, uh, literature as the way of appropriation of world uh, by um, human soul yeah, or uh, uh, human um, entity uh, and the uh, social and even uh, historical um, context uh, uh, put uh, uh, not in the front of uh, these ideas, but uh, um, also uh, he tried to um, uh, survive uh, uh, some kind of uh, literary autonomy as in a newspaper article uh, from January of uh, 1919. Uh, so he tried to continue his uh, early work в мастерской художественного слова in very uh, sorry, different uh, uh, way, uh, but he uh, try in the article of literary synthesis uh, to uh, search uh, um, uh, some middle uh, way uh, between uh, um, uh, poor formalists uh, from one side and uh, uh, very limited uh, uh, in style of Kolyak, uh, Koryak or uh, Zagul uh, in uh, Ukraine uh, studies uh, treatment of uh, uh, literary evolution uh, in uh, sociological uh, terms. Uh, and this third way uh, is Potepnian way. Um, it's interesting, uh, as I uh, said uh, previously, um, uh, his uh, um, uh, essay uh, against the long gene for a good old time, not published now, but uh, uh, the, uh, some excerpts uh, uh, from what uh, um, uh, gives the picture of a uh, uh, very complex uh, uh, attitude of uh, old uh, professor uh, to new reality, uh, but uh, uh, without uh, um, any um, explicit uh, uh, reference uh, uh, to the old social or, or old cultural reality as norms. Uh, he tried to be the scholar of new epoch, and uh, uh, the works of uh, Bilecki during Stalin's time, uh, when uh, he was elected not also the uh, full academician, uh, full member of Academy of Science, but also the uh, chief of uh, Institute of Literature uh, by Ukrainian Academy of Science, uh, uh, all that uh, works um, uh, uh, witnessed uh, uh, his uh, uh, very interesting uh, try to combine uh, uh, old uh, um, uh, heritage, uh, uh, idea of uh, um, uh, cultural continuation, uh, but also uh, Marxist uh, terminology and also borrowing of uh, um, uh, class approach, class uh, But uh, also um, his um, uh, uh, try to put a um, uh, new picture of uh, Ukrainian literary evolution from the all this time, uh, give a lot of criticism uh, ju just uh, um, during uh, Zhdanovist's uh, campaign of the late uh, uh, the 40s. And uh, Sergei Kelchik uh, in his book, Stalin's Empire of Memory, also, uh, or Valentina Harhun uh, uh, in her works um, uh, about uh, um, uh, socialist uh, canon Ukrainian literature put uh, uh, their attentions uh, uh, also the criticism of uh, uh, Ukrainian literary studies, uh, Gozenput, and uh, especially Bilecki. And it's interesting that in um, uh, left um, uh, archival volume Stalin and Cosmopolitism, 
uh, also was published a special report uh, of Moscow uh, Agitprop uh, branch of Central Committee to uh, Mikhail Suslov. Uh, uh, just then he was also responsible for uh, Soviet ideology um, about uh, um, uh, Belecki errors uh, um, uh, in treatment of Ukrainian literature. Uh, uh, is it uh, is it seen? Okay, uh, I not be uh, reproduced uh, this uh, uh, treatment, but uh, it is uh, uh, very. Uh, um, uh, a uh, very good example of uh, Soviet uh, rhetoric and uh, uh, how the uh, Belecki reference uh, not only Potibnya, but uh, especially to Veselovsky uh, in his article of uh, 1940 uh, was used by his critic uh, uh, Novikov uh, from uh, uh, party uh, academy uh, and uh, uh, really the reason for this attack against Belecki was also election in um, Soviet Academy of Science uh, in Moscow. Belecki would be elected in Academy, but uh, uh, after the death of Stalin uh, in the end of his life in uh, 1958. Um, during the so Belecki uh, tried to uh, uh, to do uh, some continuity between old and uh, new uh, Ukrainian philology. He published uh, some article, um, not in Slovo Chas, the Herald of uh, uh, Institute of Ukrainian Academy of Science, but in uh, Kharkiv about the evolution of uh, um, uh, 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 both uh, pre-revolutionary literary studies in Ukraine and uh, literary studies during Soviet uh, period. Uh, he not uh, uh, possibility put uh, all names uh, um, person as uh, Zerov, Yakubsky, and so on, uh, but uh, he uh, tried to do the uh, picture of uh, uh, continuity between old and uh, new um, uh, scholarship uh, and uh, study of uh, Ukrainian literature uh, before and after revolution and uh, uh, try to uh, present uh, uh, Soviet uh, literary studies, literatura as continuation of uh, uh, good uh, tradition uh, of uh, pre-revolutionary time, uh, uh, also with uh, Potibnya and uh, uh, rehabilitated in the quotation um, Veselovsky uh, after 19. Uh, 53 after the death of Stalin. And position of uh, um, uh, Belecki was similar to uh, um, uh, both uh, uh, Moscow and Leningrad uh, philologists also closed uh, for formalism uh, uh, from the uh, 20 years. Uh, first was uh, Grigory Vinakur, uh, who even uh, in uh, uh, his article of uh, uh, 24 and especially in uh, uh, courses of uh, the 40 years, uh, try to come back to philology as uh, special uh, and uh, established uh, method of uh, uh, liter literature studies um, in Soviet Union, uh, even in realm of uh, uh, Soviet uh, ideology and uh, um, its uh, framework. And um, another, and maybe more um, crucial and important for uh, Belecki was uh, uh, Viktor Jermunsky, uh, who was a similar example 
to put uh, uh, introduction to literary studies uh, uh, as a continuation of uh, um, uh, first of all uh, Veselovsky tradition of um, literary treatment. But uh, the price uh, of uh, uh, Belecki uh, activity in the uh, official posts uh, uh, in Academy of Science, in Institute of Literary Studies, was very high. And uh, just after his uh, death, uh, uh, when he get uh, the news about Belecki's death, Yuri Oxman, um, uh, who was charged uh, uh, in the end of 30, but uh, uh, come back to uh, literary studies, uh, uh, put in his personal letter uh, to Nikolai Gudzi, a uh, Kievan philologist uh, close to Zerov, Neoclassics, and even Belecki. Gudzi was the um, author of uh, uh, a special article in uh, Belecki, uh, five volume collected works. Uh, uh, published uh, in the 60s during the so. Uh, so Oxman in this uh, characteristic, uh, very lucid and uh, um, I suppose uh, non-positive, uh, give very sad picture of uh, uh, inner intellectual evolution of Belecki. So the position of Vinokur and uh, Zermunsky, I suppose during the so was uh, much more um, fruitful uh, for the uh, Soviet uh, uh, structuralism also, uh, but uh, uh, the um, environment, uh, intellectual uh, context of uh, late Belecki work in Kiev, uh, uh, in Kaganovich uh, or in Shelley's time was very different from uh, Moscow on Leningrad um, uh, atmosphere of this post-Stalinist period. And the last uh, um, ideas uh, of um, different treatment, um, uh, the very concept of literary synthesis uh, by Belecki is uh, um, uh, two ways, uh, two opposite uh, paths uh, um, uh, uh, get by uh, Ivan Zuba, the author of internationalism or Russification uh, treatment. Zuba was literary critics, and uh, um, I suppose it's possible to say pupil of um, uh, Bilecki. And uh, uh, when Zuba come back to um, literary studies uh, after the Ukrainian independence uh, uh, in his works of 90 years, uh, Zuba devoted uh, a special article to um, Belecki theory of readers uh, uh, that we discussed previously and also especially to the idea of uh, literary synthesis. But the uh, opposite uh, 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 Faustian way of uh, 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 usage of uh, Belecki idea was uh, um, Yuri Barabash, uh, uh, who was uh, in the 70s uh, have ideological position in Central Committee of Party uh, after in Institute of World Literature in Moscow. Uh, he also referred to Belecki uh, in his uh, uh, works and manifest against Yuri Lotman and against uh, uh, a new uh, literary fashion of uh, dissident uh, intellectuals in Soviet Union. So Belecki idea and his idea of synthesis uh, with uh, his pre-revolutionary roots uh, um, uh, uh, give uh, uh, very um, uh, different uh, uh, way of uh, treatment. Uh, it's possible to use uh, uh, as uh, uh, continuation to uh, old philology from time of Veselovsky, uh, Patibnya, uh, and Peretz, uh, but uh, from the other side, uh, as Barabash, 
um, uh, realized uh, uh, to put this idea of uh, reality, of uh, cognition, uh, even mirror theory uh, against uh, uh, Soviet structuralism. Uh, and uh, I, I suppose it's uh, um, this uh, more than uh, half of century uh, uh, intellectual evolution of uh, Belecki in pre-Soviet and uh, uh, Soviet uh, uh, context uh, give us very interesting picture uh, how uh, the literary ideas uh, in the Ukraine, uh, in East Europe, uh, would be not only uh, scholar ideas, but also uh, have uh, cultural and intellectual importance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexandra, for your wonderful presentation. Um, so now uh, the dis discussion begins, and uh, um, um, may I ask all yeah. of you who want to ask questions to write them in the chat, not to put hand uh, opposite your uh, name. And taking the advantage uh, of being a moderator, uh, the floor is mine, <laughs> so uh, I will allow myself to put uh, three first questions just for the start, yeah, and then uh, and then to to uh, to ask you to uh, support the discussion. Um, yeah, so probably I will start uh, with the last. Um, uh, with the last uh, uh, presentation, Sasha, I would like to ask you um, uh, how this evolution of Belecki uh, was uh, logical to him. Uh, I mean, uh, from the one side, it seemed that um, uh, his idea of synthetism that was uh, very uh, popular among like Ukrainian uh, literary studies uh, of the 1920s and uh, probably it's hard to name the representatives of pure formalism. Uh, on the other side, it's hard to name the representatives of pure social, sociological approach or Marxist approach, as we actually in 1920s uh, do not know or they didn't know what is Marxist approach as it was uh, formed after. Yeah. Uh, so on the one hand, it seems that uh, this um, uh, um, this move to the uh, uh, synthetism of Bilecki was like a logical uh, step in his uh, uh, like uh, scholar's evolution. Yeah, but on the other side, uh, on the other side, taking the um, uh, the ideological and political context, yeah, it seemed that it was like um, he he had to do it. Yeah, uh, so that that would be. Uh, mind question and also if you if you if you may can you uh, um, provide us with a wider comment on Polotsky uh, because I, I didn't uh, or I don't see uh, how Polotsky helped him uh, to combine this uh, these two approaches yeah uh, why why Polotsky yeah in, in other words um, as for um, Natalia uh, and probably both Natalia and Oksana, um, I would like to uh, to ask um, about the uh, the problem of the reader. Uh, so uh, I, I would say that like the problem of the reader, the main feature that differs Ukrainian literary studies of the 1920s. Um, and uh, there are some reasons for it. Uh, so I will address the first question to Oksana, uh, probably um, about the uh, general context. Uh, I mean, in the first, uh, uh, in the first, first of all, the Russian context, uh, because it, it seems to me that the um, uh, Russian um, scholars they also studied uh, the problem of reader, uh, but this work started to appear a little bit later in the 1920s. And here, for example, I should mention the work of uh, Taparov, uh, Christiania Pisatilek. Uh, that was published in 1930s. And this work, this precise work, correlates with the uh, mentioned work, mentioned by Oksana, work of Boris Grinchenko from uh, 1907, yeah, so 23 years before, Pered uh, Shirokem Svitam, like be, um, in the face of the uh, wide world. Um, and this precise, uh, yeah, these two works, they correlate uh, with each other very good because they are about the uh, peasant uh, readers and how they receive 
uh, authors or like literature, yeah. So the study of this uh, precise, uh, let me say, social uh, perception. And in this case, it's interesting why uh, Bilecki he uh, didn't appeal to this work of Rinchenko, yeah, uh, in his uh, in his research. Uh, on the other side, and this would be my question to Natalia. Uh, this is a question concerns the uh, above mentioned work of uh, Zerov, uh, his um, uh, history, Nové Ukrainské písmenstvo, new literary criticism, yeah, uh, of uh, 1924, uh, where he uh, uses the uh, notion of Alexander Bilecki, uh, the writer who. Uh, Zaperu, uh, who took the uh, the stilos, yeah. Uh, uh, but before analyzing uh, Katlerievshina and the phenomenon of Katlerievshina, yeah, he gives the example of two um, of two Ukrainian writers of the uh, second half of the nineteenth century. It's Staraženka and Shoholiv. And he appeals to the so-called notion, formalist notion of parallel series, parallel nerat. And he says that uh, uh, the, um, this problem of the reader is very important for uh, of the development of Ukrainian literature as it was forbidden. And it for a long time uh, was developed uh, within like the, uh, uh, not manuscripts, but uh, uh, how you say, rukopis, I forgot this word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, rukopis, uh, the, and that was the reason why uh, it formed its provincialism, yeah, and the uh, backwardness, yeah, as um, uh, as uh, it was given by uh, by the historical circumstances of its development. So uh, combining all this, it seems that uh, this problem of reader was uh, of a high importance for Ukrainian literature and its development, yeah? Not just a kind of a theoretical problem, uh, but it actually indeed explained a lot in the development of it. Uh, so that that would be uh, mine part. <laughs> um, probably, I don't know, Alexander, you, you, you may start. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, the question. Uh, for me, uh, maybe very interesting, uh, intriguing uh, aspect is uh, um, uh, why uh, Bilecki not used uh, his uh, uh, theory of reader uh, after the Great Break, during the shorter and during the 40 years, uh, especially after the uh, period of so. Uh, Grigory Sivokon, uh, who was the disciple of uh, um, Bilecki in some kind, uh, uh, even in, uh, in the 1970s, uh, um, uh, continued uh, this uh, uh, line of uh, thinking, uh, but uh, Bilecki himself no. Uh, why? Uh, maybe uh, he thinks uh, that is uh, uh, not uh, canonical uh, sociology. Uh, it is not Marxist approach, but it is it's possible to uh, uh, search some synthesis. Uh, obviously, that in his article of uh, 1940, uh, Bilecki himself. Uh, prefer this uh, combination of, of uh, Potebnia and uh, uh, Marxism, uh, Marxism in broad sense. Uh, even the um, Lenin uh, uh, theory of uh, mirrors uh, um, in epistemological uh, frameworks, uh, but not his uh, um, reader response uh, ideas. Uh, for, for me, uh, it's not clear why. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, Bilecki compared with uh, Bilecki of the 30s compared with Mikhail Bakhtin. Uh, Mikhail Bakhtin contribution to the theory of novel. Uh, 
but uh, it is also for me very problematic uh, ideas because uh, um, uh, late Bilecki, major Bilecki, uh, after the twenties, uh, have uh, um, uh, I can say. Uh, um, late, uh, multi-leveled uh, um, approach of literature and uh, uh, some levels, uh, for example, uh, theory of readers, uh, not correspondent uh, to the general frameworks of his works uh, on Pushkin, on comparative literature, uh, or even of Shevchenko. Uh, he stopped uh, uh, um, to continue uh, his own way of thinking from the 20 years. It is very different picture uh, than uh, late Bakhtin, uh, late Jermunsky, uh, and uh, even late Vinogradov or Vinokur. Um, not uh, in uh, uh, the press of uh, Belecki. Um, and uh, another question about Simeon Povsky, um, maybe I have uh, not the uh, not the room for uh, speaking. Um, it's especially uh, Polotsky, uh, Ukrainian, Belarusian, um, all Russian ambivalence. And uh, uh, during the civil war, uh, Belecki directly referenced to Simeon Polotsky. Uh, as example for his own, for the ah, ambivalence yeah, yeah. of uh, this, yeah. cultural mm -hmm. upheaval and uh, what uh, uh, what me and uh, what we, uh, especially very interesting uh, concept of we during the civil war, who we, good the we, uh, but there of no, in Knigar not we for Belecki in 1919. Uh, maybe Natalia not agree with me, uh, and uh, Belecki directly reference to Simeon Polotsky, ambivalence and uh, um, uh, oscillated uh, between, uh, between all Russian uh, scope and uh, uh, local uh, Ukrainian and local uh, Belarusian tradition. And this idea of old, old new um, rupture uh, was uh, important for his understanding uh, even later. A revolution of the uh, of the Pet Petr the Great and revolution of the Lenin and Stalin. As I mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, maybe I uh, thank you very much for, for the question. Um, maybe uh, about Grinchenko, um, uh, I think um, it, uh, I, I can uh, propose uh, um, such answer. Um, in 19th century Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukraine literature um, is banned uh, um, during, uh, during many years. So for, for writers, uh, um, uh, there are the question who is our reader and for whom we are writing it's a uh, yeah, maybe it's um, and how our writing de determine our poetics uh, and maybe these questions uh, is very important for Hrinchenko uh, and uh, uh, that uh, push him uh, uh, analyzes uh, real readers and um, uh, doing maybe uh, experiment and uh, uh, give uh, real readers uh, Ukrainian uh, book and uh, uh, analyze the reaction of uh, this um, of the situation. So uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, it's uh, um, it's it can be answer why. Um, the problem of reader uh, for Ukrainian literature is more important uh, uh, if we compare with the Russian literature. Because in Russian literature, uh, writer uh, know who is reader. There are the very uh, big uh, um, magazines, uh, it's active uh, literary process. In Ukrainian, this process is banned 
uh, and uh, uh, they uh, should be um, uh, try to to analyze and understand where is and what is the Ukrainian literature. Uh, and uh, uh, for the uh, and uh, uh, the question uh, is the problem of a reader in the Russian literature um, exist uh, um, um, appear uh, appeared in early um, to uh, early twenty thirties uh, maybe uh, in uh, works in uh, Taparov. Uh, but uh, I think it's um, we can uh, um, uh, we can remember uh, another conception by Mikola Rubakin. But uh, is this very um, important uh, book and uh, a very important uh, um, conception uh, with uh, uh, bibliopsychology um, aspects of uh, describing and analyzes the problem of reader. Uh, and for his works, Bileski, uh, Bileski is based for, uh, the, uh, for, for his work, and uh, Rubakin formulated uh, his conception before the revolution, uh, before the revolution, and but uh, is um, as experimental uh, as exper as the. Um, uh, experimental way to describe uh, describe writer uh, from uh, sorry describe reader from a questionnaire or um, uh, uh, or through the library focused on uh, um, spheres of library. So it's not the, uh, the problem poetics. Uh, but uh, it's uh, sort of very uh, for, for me it's very uh, interesting aspects how a reader can uh, change the poetic of writer and these aspects uh, may be described in articles uh, by Vilecki, the uh, interlocutor of Nikrasov because Nikrasov in uh, um, uh, his works uh, um, uh, in some times, uh, uh, in his works, uh, uh, his poetics uh, is changed. Why? Bilecki, uh, Bilecki uh, tried to explain because he ori orientation for another reader, for peasant reader, because he uh, want to uh, communicate with this reader and he uh, some, um, uh, he uh, want to uh, became he, uh, his poetic his his poetic more simply uh, and the imitation maybe folklore uh, it's a, a question how the reader can determine the poetic it's very important uh, problem for poetic uh, and maybe uh, this not uh, socio sociology is uh, a pure uh, term, but is a uh, uh, sociology as a literature is a uh, is the sociology uh, of the literature exactly. Uh, I can answer on your question in such way. Thank you very much. Thank you. It, it makes sense. Yeah, I think we could further discuss it more. Uh, Natalia, yeah. Uh, Galina, uh, thank you very much for your question, and I agree with you. Uh, you uh, said about uh, the type of the reader described by uh, Leonid, um, Alexander Bilecki, so-called читатель, взявшийся за перо, the reader who uh, began to write accidentally, incidentally, by chance. It was uh, not uh, writing was not his, uh, prof let's say, vocation. Yes. And uh, uh, Mikola Zero based the, uh, the line of Ukrainian literature, so-called remains of uh, classicism, Kotlerevsky and Kotlerevshina, he based this line of Ukrainian literature uh, on this concept, on this uh, type of the reader. And uh, uh, you are right that uh, he describes two parallel series, uh, two parallel series um, in, U in the Ukrainian literature of the 19th century uh, of Romanticism and Kotlerevshina. And uh, the true, let's say, the true Ukrainian 
literature for neoclassicists and Puzero really began um, be, uh, began uh, with Romanticism, with the a few uh, with the first attempts of Gulag Artemovsky, and uh, so on. Uh, so um, uh, I agree with you <laughs> that he uh, that he. Uh, utilize they have utilized this concept of Bileski in the history of literature in describing two lines. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, I have much questions, but uh, probably when, if if we will have time, I will also ask ask you. Uh, we have uh, another question from uh, Eric Martin. Um, yeah, thank you. I have uh, two questions, but um, rather out of curiosity because um, all the writers and thinkers presented today are not um, really present to me. So I uh, have one question to Natalia, like a follow up to this um, idea of the reader. So um, this um, uh, sociology is like to be understood um, like verbatim, like um, uh, I thought of Belinsky, not of Belinsky, but of Belinsky, who uh, famously said that uh, the big, uh, the, the great Russian literature was um, produced by, by the keen readers. Yeah, the, the readers were so <laughs> like um, enthusiastic and so demand demandative, they, they demanded like good literature and so the uh, writers have, uh, have to write it. Is it to be understood in this way or uh, is this idea of an implicit reader um, also to be understood in terms of uh, the constants uh, school like Iser and Yaust, like reception aesthetic, reception aesthetics, uh, uh, who has this um, concept of uh, the implicit uh, reader or uh, the uh, Lehrsteller, I, I don't even know how to say it in English. Uh, so this um, empty space in the text that uh, the reader has to, uh, to complete. So, um, sorry, <laughs> the question is, <laughs> so is this concept, um, so how much is it like, um, uh, backwarded to, to the 19th century and how much is it like forward uh, of forwarded uh, in, in, into the 20th uh, century so maybe this question and I have maybe a question to, to Oksana but this is like total of, 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 of lack of knowledge for, for the classicists for the neoclassicists uh, as I understand it, they all were writers, so there were no um, uh, other um, artists there, like, I don't know, paintings or architecture or something. And uh, the, question, the, the reason for the question is that um, um, the social realism is kind of classicist, maybe, so this... Um, uh, transition of epochs from, from the avant-garde to, to the classicism and neoclassicism seems so logical to me. And um, my question is if um, it's just um, like um, a question of, of names or if they like were really classicist in, in some uh, like um, palpable sense of uh, yeah, in, in terms of epochs. So can they be uh, compared with uh, the neoclassicism that was uh, in, in Stalinist um, culture? Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe a first question is for me. Yes, it's about reader, Natalia. Uh, Klaus, and classicism is for you, yeah? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> because uh, about classicism, uh, it's not, uh, not. Thank you very much for, for the question. I, um, as I um, uh, as I can um, um, can um, formulate uh, the answer, um, it very. Uh, 
it's very interesting to compare maybe uh, the sociology of uh, uh, or, um, uh, describing uh, how de uh, describe uh, the problem of reader in 1920s uh, and uh, maybe read the response criticism of the um, uh, 60s. Uh, as uh, I, I can understand, maybe I uh, am a little confused. Uh, but for me, uh, uh, for me, um, it's a different epoch, uh, and maybe uh, we can compare this um, uh, these ideas. Uh, uh, but um, um, uh, maybe, um, uh, um, uh, maybe a scientist in 1920s and uh, later uh, epoch. Uh, um, works in uh, different uh, scientific frameworks. And for me, it's very important uh, uh, being in, um, in certain epoch uh, and um, being only a history of, uh, uh, of literature. So it's very interesting to compare maybe this uh, method uh, um, uh, but uh, uh, for me, uh, uh, very uh, important uh, um, uh, being uh, in uh, um, uh, uh, being in the, the history of, of literature. Maybe it's my response for uh, my answer for for this question. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, I mixed up the names. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thank you. And I'd like also to make an, uh, to answer to your question, Eric. Uh, first of all, about uh, reader theory, re uh, reader response theory, or you've asked what kind of reader uh, did neoclassicists mean in their studies? Yeah? Uh, and I really think there were uh, different uh, types of um, reader theories, reader, uh, different ways of research. Uh, for, uh, first of all, it, uh, Kiev neoclassicists reconstruct and was historical sociology of reading. For example, Pavlo Filipovich, one of neoclassicists, reconstruct, he called it social face, social, um, social face, he called it, of the Ukrainian social setup, let's say, of the Ukrainian reader of uh, the first half of the 19th century. He read uh, all the letters, uh, manuscripts with um, declarations of their social, um, social положение, uh, social uh, setup, let's say, and try to understand to which group of the society they Parents belong. Parents of affair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, to which group so, so, uh, of society they belong. What were their interests? And uh, Pavlo Filipovich reconstructed, it was, uh, uh, the reader of the previous 19th century. Uh, but uh, there, um, there were also interesting statements in criticism by Kiev neoclassicists that um, correlate with the um, reader response theory of the 1960s, uh, let's say. There were some, uh, they uh, do not uh, call this type of the reader implicit. But they wrote a, uh, they wrote a lot about um, empty places in the text that should be uh, cleared by the reader. Author didn't um, let uh, the author of the text left so empty places, and the reader should um, fill these places according to his uh, views and so on. And uh, these kinds of statements we uh, can find in there in texts of neoclassicists as well. But, but um, um, in my opinion, reader theory uh, was more developed in the, in the Hakiv Center. Uh, Alexandra and Oksana uh, told us about Hakiv Center of uh, Ukrainian Studies. Um, uh, but uh, uh, it was not major project in theory by neoclassicists. And you also asked me about um, the, the name of the group. Why are they neoclassicists? No? Uh, 
Is, is it no? no about how are but, they? But you, you, are you, you can answer. Uh, it. You, you, you ask me, uh, did they have uh, anything in common with Stalin, uh, Stalinist uh, class, uh, classicism? Classicism. Yeah. So the, the, there is like actually there there is um, a neoclassicist style in 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 all of Europe. I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say like uh, say for instance. Um, Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I understand. Well, uh, question yes. is it about style trends? Yeah, it, it's about it's about style. Do, yes. do they have uh -huh. a style that can be considered like neoclassicism? Yes, uh, like he, uh, all, all over Europe. Uh, Kiev neoclassicism was well, first of all. Um, so, so sorry, mm -hmm. Paul Paul Valery would be like a, an example. Uh, Kiev neoclassicists uh, were uh, known first of all as poets. And they really created um, this classic oriente oriented literature. They uh, translated, for example, Latin uh, ancient Rome, po uh, Roman poetry. And the uh, Roman poetry was, um, uh, was a base for uh, Mikola Zero's poetry. Uh, they had a lot in common with Russian Achmaism. Uh, they had a lot in common with uh, French Parnassians. Uh, and, uh, and, but it's a matter of argument of uh, Ukrainian uh, researchers whether classical trend in the classical direction in the poetry was major because it was a complex of different influences. Let's say romantic, symbolistic, they, um, they were aware of Russian symboli symbolism as well. It's, uh, it's uh, Kiev neoclassicist is uh, such an entangled project in Ukrainian poetry as well. But they, uh, some of the, um, no, let's say, the writings of the 1920s had a lot in common with uh, the uh, this classical paradigm, let's say. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is there any question uh, who would like to address? I think Bogdan has a question. Bogdan, yeah, Bogdan, yeah, yeah. Bogdan uh, please. Thank you so much. I'm, tr I'm still trying to formulate my questions, to be honest, because I'm overwhelmed in a very positive way by the richness of all the presentations, uh, truly so. It's also so great that this panel has made it possible to really put this idea of the productive um, tug of war, as it were, at this opposite poles of formalism and the sociological as it were, approach to really bring it to the fore, to understand this period a bit better as well. And uh, I, I've just, I just really wanted to say in the first place that I really appreciated um, in all of the presentations, in uh, Oksana Poshko's presentation, I'm just really grateful for all of the uh, fantastic photos from the archives. It's just, it's just a joy for the eyes, honestly, and all these images. And I, I seem to have heard that you mentioned that those paintings um, uh, were even made by uh, Bielecki, if I, if I got that right, which is, which is really impressive and just gives you a bit of a character. Uh, of those works. And uh, yesterday we also spoke, spoke about prosopography. And I think that Natalia did just a fantastic job at showing these connections between uh, the Russian context and the Ukrainian context. Personally, I really appreciated it. And it also really helps us to understand the complex semi-sphere, to use Lordman's term, um, within this nascent Soviet project, as it were, and the kind of general um, mutual influences and interpenetration and perhaps to understand it even more vividly and visibly than in literature itself. So literary criticism gives us a great insight into this really interesting interaction that led to some similarities and very pregnant differences as well. And of course, um, Alexandra's really uh, insightful close reading of Beletsky's works. I really, really appreciated his contributions. That's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, also, one cannot but be struck by how these reflections and theories about the role of the reader um, and the uh, uh, relationship between the writing process and the reading process 
are just so pre-signed, as it were, when we think about those theories that were developed in the 60s, in the 70s, and, you know, one thinks exactly like Eric mentioned, this reader response theories, but also when we think of the writerly texts and readerly texts, this theory by Bart, he was speaking about the fact that there are some texts that essentially do not have much of an impact on the reader. Uh, and uh, at the same time, there are those texts, the ones that he called writerly, that really influence the subject position of the reader. And it seems like already in the 20s, uh, these ideas were developed in such a pregnant way. Um, and of course, you know, just this really valuable formulations like Chitatil Dashis as a Piro or Chitatil Ivo Tvorchistva, written and their creative work are absolutely amazing. Uh, so, but I suppose uh, in terms of my questions that I would be really keen to ask and hear your thoughts on, uh, what do you think? One of them is the idea of continuity. And uh, it was really great to hear Alexander's uh, talk uh, this about this reference to Ivan Zuba's piece on Bilecki and um, which was published in the 1990s. But still, uh, it's, it's just really interesting to see this connection of the generations as it were. And uh, I know that in my own work, when I worked in the uh, archives um, and, and looked at uh, the works of Vasil Stus from a uh, dissident from the 1960s, 70s, uh, incidentally, Stus wrote his PhD on the question of the um, emotionality and mutinisty of художних uh, творах uh, in, in literary works. And he actually dedicated quite lots of uh, space to the idea of the reader and the readerly perce perception as well. Um, and definitely this discourse from the 1920s influenced him too. So I was just wondering, of course, Alexander also referred to uh, this really interesting um, um, affinities, as it were, between uh, the idea of reality, Beletsky's idea of reality, and uh, Bohdan Ihor Antonich, uh, Antonich's approach to, to the reality and his uh, approach from the standpoint of phenomenolo phenomenology of poetry. So my first question would be, uh, if you perhaps could give, uh, to, to all of the speakers, if you perhaps could give an example or more examples of this continuity of these ideas uh, into the 1960s and 1970s especially because that's such a pregnant period as well. Uh, that would be one question. And the second question has to do with the role of uh, the psychological element. So of course, when we speak about formalist aesthetics and the sociological slash Marxist aesthetics, war sort of gets lost in translation as it were, or in theory in this case, is the role of the human being and the complex emotional life of the human being, because neither for the formalists nor for the, um, for the other side of the spectrum, for the sociolog sociologists, it, it feels like the human being is so central. And that, of course, makes one think of the so-called psychological factor that uh, Mukola Fulluwi was speaking about uh, during the uh, literary debate or literary discussion in the 1920s, literally needing to persuade his readers uh, from other camps, as it were, this literary discussion, that we shouldn't be afraid of the notion of psychology and of the notion of uh, the psychological element. And of course, Fulvi uh, didn't really develop a very cohesive theory of the psychological, but he was just really showing the complex relationship between the class identity and the, this kind of subjective, subjective identity. And so, of course, uh, all of our speakers mentioned the importance and the influence of Potemnia's psychological theory. But I was just wondering um, whether you could just elaborate a bit more on the role of the individuality. Um, to what extent were they taken it on board? So were not allowed to take it on board, but there are some signs that they were really interested in it. So I'm sorry for such a long um comment and questions, but I would be really grateful for your responses. Thank you. Uh, could I start uh, answering your question, Mukhtan? Uh, you asked uh, for more examples of this uh, simultaneity or non-simultaneity in uh, the literary criticism. And I'll give such a um, shining example. I have told about um, 
PhD, PhD thesis defended by uh, Oswald Burkhardt in Münster in 1940. It was uh, titled uh, Late Motifs by Leonid Andreev. In this uh, paper, Oswald Burkhardt uh, developed the ideas and methodological approach of uh, Austrian um, theorist Leo Spitzer. Uh, Although he didn't mention his, uh, his uh, the name of Leo Spitzer isn't mentioned in the publication of uh, the thesis. Uh, at the same time, uh, not at the same time, but uh, uh, we know about uh, so-called poetic uh, poetics of expressiveness, poetic of resilience in Russia. Uh, it, this uh, trend theoretical was developed in the uh, as a part of Russian structuralism in 1930s. And the ideas of Oswald Burkhardt from of, nine, of the 1940s are very similar, very consonant to the ideas of Russian, Russian uh, poetics of expre express, expressiveness. Uh, but I don't see there, uh, I don't see here any um, interrelations. I think uh, these were typological similarities uh, because uh, let's say uh, Yuri uh, uh, Shiglov, uh, the representative represent, uh, of these uh, poetics, uh, poetic poetic uh, he uh, said in his uh, papers that he developed the ideas of uh, Karnechukovsky, um, the, uh, the ideas of Karnechukovsky and his uh, methodology of uh, methodology of um, late motive analysis. Karnechukovsky, in his article Ahmatova uh, and Mayakovsky, it was published in 1921. This article. By Kornechukovsky. He developed the same ideas as Oswald Burhardt, let's say, Leo Spitzer, and um, Yuri Shiglov in the 1960s. So we have uh, here parallel series, let's say, parallel um, lines of the theoretical thought uh, with different roots and with different sources, but uh, with, uh, with similarities, typological similarities. Thank you. Maybe I try uh, to present my position, uh, and it is uh, uh, pessimistic and maybe skeptic. Uh, I suppose uh, uh, the search for a real continuity between the Ukrainian 20s and uh, German 60s, between Bilecki and Yaus, uh, is uh, uh, invention of tradition. It's host. It's a very uh, positive host for uh, Ukrainian literary scholars and uh, studies as field. Uh, but I suppose uh, it is a very different uh, path of thinking. It's possible in, in the realm of history of ideas, uh, we have uh, any um, operation uh, with blocks of ideas as uh, uh, children's Lego, yeah? Uh, put uh, one ideas and uh, give similarity to another ideas. Uh, very interesting information from Natalia about Spitzer and Burkhardt uh, ideas, uh, uh, especially some ideas of Chizhevsky, and Chizhevsky is personal um, uh, uh, personal воплощение, uh, embodiment of co continuity. But really, if we put uh, to the idea of Chizhevsky of 20s and Chizhevsky of 70s, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, ruptures. And uh, my position is that we as histo intellectual historian and historian of ideas uh, put uh, the attention about the ruptures. And for the uh, 
uh, to uh, for the Bogdan's questions, uh, I uh, can say that um, uh, for, for the fifties uh, and the sixties, uh, maybe the main idea was uh, uh, in Van Drach of or Lina Kostenko poetry and uh, uh, new poetical sensitivity and uh, novi Chitach, new readers uh, of the Thor uh, era. It is very, very different from the peasant uh, readers of the 20s and uh, um, uh, Zerov's uh, readers uh, during the time of Glibov and, or, or Shogolev uh, uh, from the 19th century. So we have uh, uh, th uh, uh, at minimum three uh, type of uh, readers thinking. It's, it's, it's not maybe theory in um, an explicit way, but uh, some very fruitful and very productive ideas. Uh, for example, Eichenbaum ideas about readers is different uh, uh, even from the, also from the 20 years. So uh, um, my point is uh, put attention to ruptures and uh, not the um, arbitrary construction of similarity. Maybe it's skeptical, but I suppose it's uh, more productive. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but also could be, here could be the example of um, you know, Vladimir Dechavin, yeah, who continued actually to, to study style and his poetics. Uh, I mean, not to the problem of the reader, but like in general, a uh, kind of uh, um, uh, uh, continuosity. Yeah? Uh, otherwise, while uh, finishing the book with Alexander, we, um, uh, we agreed that uh, the uh, theoretical searchings of the Ukrainian diaspora and immigration yeah, were, uh, except maybe uh, Petrov and maybe some others, but not more, not many. They were not so um, um, not so innovative and interesting as uh, they were inside the Soviet Ukraine of the 1920s. So probably this uh, like precise uh, situation of like uh, ideological pressure and searchings and the new, the novelty and the searching for the new and the, as uh, Annette yesterday talked, uh, the uh, futurization of science, yeah, uh, or futurism in science, yeah, it was like a great impulse for, uh, for innovations. Um, yeah, just a small comment. I don't know, Oksana, do you want to add something? Oh, uh, thank you, Helena. Uh, I want to uh, address this question for you. Uh, I uh, thank you very much, Bogdana, for the, uh, your feedback. And uh, maybe Helena really know, uh, knew about psychological approach uh, and uh, ideas in this period more. So, uh, Helena, I uh, would address this question for you. Uh, about your about your and uh, Alexander books book books. <laughs> Just one, but quite big. It could be two of them, <laughs> like uh, four hundred and four hundred for both of us. <laughs> Let's divide it like this. Um, Alexander, so probably uh, will will add something. Yeah, actually, it's uh, an interesting uh, question. Uh, I, I would also like to discuss, but we don't have much time. Like uh, the question I would pose is, uh, uh, what was uh, sociological approach in Ukraine, and uh, was it differ from the uh, Russian literary context? Um, uh, so previously, um, or like, first of all, uh, should I say that yes, and uh, Alexander already uh, wrote in the common chat, yeah, that uh, Plekhanov, uh, Grigory uh, Plekhanov, uh, and um, uh, Alexander Fritsche, uh, and uh, the school of Periverziv, yes, sociological school of Periverziv, were uh, the main, like, uh, hard stones um, on which, like, literary, Ukrainian literary critics you're oriented to. Uh, compared to the uh, 
uh, Russian context, um, of course, Plekhanov, uh, they're rather popular too, uh, but also here should be named like Lunacharsky, uh, Bogdanov, uh, and of course not Fritsche, yeah, because Fritsche, who was uh, afterwards called as like a vulgar uh, sociologist, yeah, uh, but Fritsche was extremely popular uh, among Ukrainian critics. And here it's also important to em em emphasize one like um, feature that differs this to Russian-Ukrainian context in relation to the development of Russian formalism. And the, uh, the point of starting of the Marxist critique of the formalism, um, the well-known uh, article of Leon Trotsky from 1923, uh, which uh, suggests that uh, uh, formalists, um, uh, like uh, he, he says about them, like uh, bourgeois science, but they could be used as a technical school. And this was the very productive formulation, uh, both for uh, uh, Russian literary scholars and Ukrainians. For example, uh, Mykola Khvilovy in his famous pamphlet from uh, 1926, uh, which was entitled as formalism uh, with the uh, question mark. Uh, he wrote that um, formalists uh, are enemies to us as they are bourgeois science. Actually, he repeats uh, Trotsky, yeah? but uh, as the technical school, uh, we uh, appreciate them and we use them. So it's very important we use them. Yeah, And here it's also important that uh, it's like the big discussion probably <laughs> that could be started with uh, Natalia uh, and both Natalia and you is uh, uh, like the um, the move of neoclassic uh, to this uh, sociological approach uh, was it given by the um, uh, like the external circumstances or what or was it a, a bit of uh, logical internal development, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I, I, I actually I didn't much agree about Boris Yakubsky, but I think we don't have much time to discuss. So probably it's like the next the next conference. And um, coming back to Trotsky, if Trotsky started to uh, his critique of the formal school uh, from 1923 in Ukrainian uh, criticism, it started uh, a little bit early. It's uh, famous. Um, article of uh, a very famous uh, those days critique Vladimir Volodymyr Koryak Vladimir Koryak uh, from 1922 he published an article in the newspaper if, if I remember right Paralitarskaya uh, Pravda yeah where he uh, made this strong distinction he he said that uh, there are uh, several uh, literary schools one of them is uh, formalists uh, plus futurists <laughs> uh, another of them it's potebnya uh, school it's very important and another uh, is like marxist school yeah so and uh, his uh, article was like against uh, all of them except the Marxist one. But also it's interesting, and it's another question <laughs> that could be uh, discussed, uh, the development of uh, Vladimir Karyak. As usual in Ukrainian literary um, uh, studies, uh, like he is like the example number first of the critic Marxist, who is like strong uh, Marxist, deep-rooted Marxist, and so on. But indeed, it's not like this. And uh, his views as Marxist critic were uh, also under evolution. And uh, for example, his article from 1925, Povrch, um, Povrch, um, uh, Oksan, please uh, uh, no. is, is a censor, is a censor. Koryak yeah, is a censor. Uh, <laughs> uh, Скажи, как назывался, поверхи, uh, про поверхи. 
Uh, I forgot the, the precise name of this article. I'm sorry. I'll just write in the uh, common chat. Yeah. So it's very, it's um, worse to, to check because it consists of two parts. The first part, part is where he criticizes like formalists. And then uh, the next part, which is much more bigger, he just names um, the good things, like uh, formalist as a technical school, uh, made for the literary critics. And this list consists of like 175 positions. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the struggle of the uh, of the not floors, floor. but floor, floor, yeah, but it's floor. like uh, word by word. So the struggle of stages, the, maybe stages, stages. yes, yeah, stages, yes, yeah, stages. Uh, so yeah, probably it would be it would be my uh, small small comment. And uh, Sasha, maybe you you would like to add something. I I missed. I, I suppose Andre has uh, some question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I, I remember about Andre, and he will he will join us. Andre, do you do you want to? Do I want to, to join you? Okay. Um, yeah. So, dear, dear colleagues, I'm kind of also confused what exactly uh, should I say now let's try to do it maybe this way so first of all I want as you could imagine I'm feeling very happy because uh, today like we spoke for a couple of hours and it was uh, Petrov everywhere and uh, it's a very unusual situation to me and I should also admit dear colleagues that I really feel being a kind of a newcomer to this field I mean deep analysis of Ukrainian literary debates of 1920s uh, and I'm very grateful to Oksana and Natalia and Sasha uh, for what they did uh, you know like really going in depth uh, that's uh, that's incredible I made so many notes and started even reading some texts re listening simultaneously to our discussion uh, and I would also like to thank uh, uh, Galina for this way of uh, moderating this panel because We've really had a chance to like to experience, yeah, how intellectual communication nowadays uh, could look like. So people who live in different places, but they really like share this set of names, concepts, yeah, archives, if you wish, and so so on. Uh, that was really great. So I'm I, I'm very very happy indeed. Uh, what could I tell? I have so many like small comments here, but maybe they are rather like irrelevant, especially. Maybe what should I say now? I should say that I hope that our today's discussion showed, especially to those of us who are not familiar very much with the Ukrainian uh, intellectual debate of the 1920s, uh, how rich and uh, diverse it was, and that it deserves no less attention than, let's say, Russian or Polish debate of this time, which is unfortunately very much the case. Let us be frank that uh, those authors we've talked about, uh, Bielecki, Petrov, Filipovich, Zerov, name it, they are completely unknown. They are not present. They are not translated. They are just not part of the story. Okay? And that's a big, serious problem. And I really hope that all together we could do something about it also in English, in German, in other languages, not just Ukrainian and Russian. Actually, the, the issue of language is very interesting to me because listening to all of you and also like thinking myself, it is amazing that almost all those people, they kind of, you know, like switched between those languages, yeah? As we know, for some of them, uh, Russian was much more like, you know, like natural native language as the Ukrainian. For others, you know, on the contrary, um, and for instance, I've been thinking that like, look again, dear colleagues, for instance, Petrov again, like in 1930s. So like, like real Stalinism, if you wish, he wrote uh, big articles about Gogol. One article for the Ukrainian collection of Gogol works published in Kiev, another one for the Russian language collection published in Moscow. Different texts, but the same uh, hero, Gogol, the same Petrov. <laughs> And you could really like just think about it, like comparing like those two approaches in two academic editions of uh, um, literary works by one person, uh, Makoma Hogol, Nikolai Gogol, if you wish. And actually Petrov was the one who insisted also in the emigre period that uh, language could not be a reason to exclude Gogol from Ukrainian literature. 
Okay, so it's not about language, it's about something else. Uh, then I very much agree, it actually I'm grateful to this Sasha's point that Volodymyr Dzerzhavin and even Burkhardt will decline. It's exactly my impression, dear colleagues. Uh, keeping in mind that, again, like we should know who, who Dzerzhavin was. He was rather like a big figure in Ukrainian, um, and not just Ukrainian, it was Ukrainian Soviet, yeah, literary studies, antiquity studies in Kharkiv uh, before the Second World War. Uh, then he uh, remained there during the Nazi occupation, and then he spent his last years in Munich, in Bavaria. And uh, that's right, he was kind of, again, like, like leaving evidence of this debate of 1920s, but, uh, yeah, in decline, if you wish. And it's actually amazing that when Yuri Klein, so Burkhardt died, unexpectedly died, yeah, early died, Dirjavin was the one who tried to uh, like support or protect him from criticism from younger colleagues like Igor Kostaisky and others. And it was kind of, you know, probably like, like protecting himself, you know, from <laughs> the very same points made by Sherech and others. And you see, like in this story, it's actually a proof, dear colleagues, it's a proof to what we've heard yesterday about this Petrov's idea of epoch and rupture and whatever, because it was the same for Derjavin, for Burkhardt, for Yakubsky, who also stayed in Kiev under occupation. Yeah, it's not, it's important to, 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 to mention it probably. So what happened to him? Yeah, right. And to many, many others. And we could compare their texts before and after. It's a fascinating exercise in itself. Uh, right. And it's also, of course, uh, very interesting, I would say, like to look deeper into, let's say, yeah, like, like key, key figures in their debates, like Potebnia mentioned so many times. Like, imagine, like, nowadays it sounds like a bit even like crazy, like serious people in the 1920s debating Potebnia in a very, you know, like uh, profound way. Yeah, we have Eisenstock piece. We have Petrov articles. Yeah, we have Herzif responses. It, all, all of it, uh, like, why? What is it about? Maybe actually some of you would like to explain it briefly because it, it, it's fascinating indeed. And I was actually amazed by what uh, uh, Natalia did. Uh, I mean, all those like showing the personal and interaction. It's great, Natalia. Really, it's it's fascinating. You, you could also, of course, like expand it if you wish to. Yeah, right. So remind of um, uh, like this complexity. And I was interested, maybe you could even tell briefly it now, like you've said that we could compare this uh, Petrov's biographical novels with what Tinyanov did in Russia, in Russian, yeah. Um, actually, I am curious, like how would you really like put this, let's say Petrov's invention, because Petrov believed himself that he invented this genre for Ukrainian literature if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, but of course he had many like examples in Russian literature, in French literature, in German literature for sure, yeah. Uh, but uh, again, like in terms of this like non-simultaneity, yeah, was it kind of like simultaneous, I don't know, like exercise adventure or not really? And maybe you have uh, some comments about it. And maybe the last point about um, uh, Boris Grinchenko mentioned yeah, by Oksana and then Sasha. In my view, dear colleagues, Grinchenko as a kind of, you know, like, like archetype of uh, populist. So Ukrainian populist, Petrov would say provincial, <laughs> provincial writer. Um, as for me, it was exactly the reason why they were not so much interested in him and his stuff, because he, as well as Kashchenko or Yavornitsky, yeah, they belong like, to this, you know, like tradition that actually neoclassicists wanted to replace. Maybe I'm wrong here. It's like a question mark, of course. And that is why also his uh, works, they were not uh, really like seriously discussed, even if they were like sometimes rather interested, even though Grinchenko is, of course, yeah, how to put it. It, it's really kind of an, a hero of a different age, not of the age of, you know, modern Ukrainian uh, literature as far, um, as far as I see it. Uh -huh. And maybe also just as an information to those of us who are not uh, specialists in Ukrainian studies, it's amazing that uh, two uh, important figures mentioned by uh, Sasha, so Yuri Barabash and Ivan Zuba, they're still alive. So we're talking about persons who are still alive 
think about it. Seriously, think about it. So Dzyubo is still alive. alive. That's right. Dzyubo is still alive in Kiev. Barabash is still alive in Moscow. Mm-hmm. 19 years old. 90 years old. And actually, uh, and amazing. About Dzyubo, sorry. That's right. Exactly. And, and it actually, Barabash is the also one of pretty good articles about Petrov, if you wish. And Dzyuba uh, is someone who, yeah, I would say, who is kind of like living evidence of this Bielecki influence on, let's say, Ukrainian intellectual landscape also after all the terrible events that happened, uh, yeah, in Brezhnev years. Okay, so I'm my, my like stopping here. It was very chaotic indeed, but I think the main point is that we, I mean, we international scholars, yeah, we people working with, let's say, Soviet modernity, uh, European debates in 1920s, We do need Ukrainian part of the story. And without Ukrainian part of the story, it, it this entire picture becomes uh, yeah, not so vivid and evident and bright. And I think we should be really seriously aware of it. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, Andre, for your very important comments. Yeah, I, I totally agree and hope that uh, in the nearest future, the situation will start to change. <laughs> yeah, maybe, Annette, uh, Galina, Annette, please. maybe I, I may add uh, only um, my thanks also to all of you. And I'm. Uh, it was a wonderful panel for me. I recognized a few names because I did my PhD on Mande Stamm and Akme Isen in Kiev uh, neoclassicists sometimes came up in, in my research then. So not all the names were new to me, but that um, uh, was an, uh, a much broader and more important uh, context. Also, Putnipnia was a great hero in the times in Constance with Renate Lachmann. So, but uh, yes, as I say, he, he was mostly um, uh, received as an an important philosopher for Russian uh, his um, scholars and not for Ukrainian scholars, as you're not surprised, I think. And so I think it's really important to have this, this piece of um, um, European important piece of literary studies and questions um, about uh, what to do with the reader, with the production, with the analysis of a literary text. And there are a few new themes um, I recognize the Kharkiv school with readership. How is the reader? That was um, a, a new piece, I think. But also, um, yeah, themes I knew from other contexts. And I think it would be really great to make combinations and, yeah, to, to, to make follow ups. Also, in German names, Ernst Elster, never heard about him. So it's not that every German. German name, Austrian name, I don't know, is, um, uh, I know Leo Spitzer, yes, he's a, he's a big name, so, but Ernst Elsa never heard, so I looked him up during the speech, so I'm very grateful for all your input, and when I didn't ask something or didn't participate, it was because the, it flowed, you, you exchange, and it was much more interesting to hear your thoughts, and um, maybe a last word only. Sometimes, if you said it was a Marxist view on formalism, it was very interesting because also Hermenoids in the 60s maybe had the same view on formalism, too technical, too, um, um, too, too decline to natural science. So it wasn't even always the hard Marxist view on formalism, for example. So it, it would be interesting to to continue our talk and to exchange our views and our knowledge on, on literary scholarship or how it is uh, named. And I'm very, very grateful for all of you, all four. I, I did already download a book, Halina, from you and Alexandra <laughs> in Emerson, Nova Literatur Abbasin is very easy to, <laughs> to receive. I don't have to, to wait for uh, weeks to receive the book. So I will continue to read you and also... Um, so we are welcome in you, yeah. reader. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted only to thank you very, very, very much, all four of you. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for your comment. Um, 
so hope we will continue <laughs> um, and uh, hope uh, never say goodbye <laughs> yeah um, uh, it was a real pleasure to take part with all of you in this um, uh, panel discussion and in, in the in the previous days discussions also and to, tomorrow we'll have the next and the last day uh, of uh, our conference uh, and uh, it will start uh, should I say it or uh, I don't know, oh, I will say uh, it will start at 2 p.m. Uh, with the panel titled as the complexity of scientific interaction uh, between the Cold War era. Uh, so uh, all of you and all of us welcome to. Um, as for, for today's discussion, I think uh, we can um, uh, we can finish it uh, and uh, go uh, drinking, celebrating. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, Andre, would you add something for? No, no, no. I'm not supposed to add. I'm not supposed to add anything. So see you tomorrow, dear colleagues. Thank you very, okay. very much indeed. And thanks again to our panelists, of course. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, and thanks a lot for. <laughs>